Students, welcome to economics revision lesson provided by the Ministry of Education for grade 12. Today we are going to see unit 7 which is about the national income and product accounts. And this is the first revision lesson on unit 7. Let's see the introductory part of the national income account and let's start with the definition of the national income account. National income account is an accounting record of the level of economic performance of a country. It measures the aggregate monetary value of all currently produced final goods and services in a country in a given period of time, usually a year. Why do we measure the level of economic performance of a country using the national income account? So the national income account has the following importances. First, it is an indicator of the level of economic growth of a country. The other important function of the national income accounting is it is used to identify the level of consumption in an economy, the level of saving in an economy, the level of investment in an economy, and the level of employment in a country. The other function of measuring the level of economic performance of a country using the national income accounting is it provides crucial information to formulate policies in the future by using the available data in the past we can use these data to make or formulate policies for the future so it is important another important function of the national income accounting is it enables us to understand the structural changes among major sectors of the economy is the contribution of the agricultural sector better than the industry is the industry good or the service sector is growing this is identified using the national income accounts. The national income account is also helpful to compare economic performances among different periods, among different regions and countries. It is useful to compare economic performance among different periods. Is the economic performance of this year better than the previous one? Is the dark regime economic performance is better than the new government? Or is the economic performance of Eritrea better than Ethiopia or Ethiopia's economic performance is better than Eritrea. This is identified using the national income accounts. Now let's see the tools used to measure the level of economic performance of a country called GDP and GNP. Let's start with the gross domestic product called GDP. GDP or gross domestic product is a measure of the market value of all currently produced final goods and services produced within a territory or boundary of a country in a given period of time, usually a year. From the definition, GDP measures the market value of goods and services. Since different products produced in an economy have different units of measurement, it's difficult to use one unit of measurement to measure GDP. So we have to convert all the outputs produced and all the service produced in an economy using market value. So we can measure GDP using bar or dollar. That means we cannot measure GDP using liter, kilometer or other units of measurement. From the definition, GDP measures the value of final goods and services. There is double counting in measuring GDP if statisticians add the value of intermediate inputs and the value of the output together. Intermediate inputs are those inputs which are output by themselves but which can be used to produce another outputs are called intermediate inputs. For example, the farmer produces the output weight using the input fertilizer, land, labor and the likes. So the weight is the output, but when we use this weight for the production of the flour meal, then this weight became intermediate input. It is an output by itself, but when we use for the production of another output, it became intermediate input. Again, when we use this flour meal is an output by itself, produced by using the input weight and when we use this flour meal for the production of biscuits in this case the flour meal became intermediate input so when we measure gdp we ha have to take the market value of the final goods and services in order to avoid double counting 
if we all add the values of the intermediate inputs and the values of the outputs together, there is double counting. So in order to avoid this, we will take the market value of the final goods and services. GDP is boundary specific. That means GDP measures the market value of all currently produced final goods and services within the boundary or the territory of a country. Whether it is produced by the foreigners or the Ethiopians, the Ethiopian GDP measures all the outputs produced within the boundary or the territory of Ethiopia. GDP is time specific. That means it is measured only current production, usually a year. Now let's rise to the gross national product or GNP. GNP is a measure of the market value of all currently produced final goods and services produced by domestic residents' resources irrespective of the places where these resources are used in a given period of time, usually a year. The difference between the GDP and GNP is the net factor income. The net factor income is the difference between the factor income received and the factor income paid. That means the NFI is always equals to the factor income received minus the factor income paid. So GDP is equal to GDP plus net factor income. If the net factor income received is greater than the factor income paid, the factor income received is greater than the factor income paid, then the net factor income will be positive. And if the factor income paid is above the factor income received, in this case, the net factor income will be negative. And if the factor income paid equals to the factor income received, in this case, the net factor income will be zero. Now, let's see the effects of the changes in the net factor income on the relationship between the GDP and GNP. If the net factor income is positive, that means if the factor income received is greater than the factor income paid, then GNP is always greater than the GDP. If the net factor income is negative, that means if the factor income paid is greater than the factor income received, in this case, GNP is always lesser than GDP. And if the net factor income is zero, then that means if the factor income paid is equal to the factor income received, then the gross national product is always equal to the gross domestic product. Now, let's see the methods of measuring GDP and GNP. There are three approaches of measuring GDP, gross domestic product, and GNP, gross national product. Measuring GDP using these three approaches is expected to give equal result. That means the three methods of measuring GDP and GNP are the income approach, the expenditure approach or the product or the output approach. All these are expected to give equality. All the national incomes earned is expected to be equal with that of all the expenses made in an economy. And all the expenses made in an economy are expected to be equal with all the outputs produced in an economy. Now let's see these approaches of measuring GDP one by one. Let's start with the product or the value added approach of measuring GDP. GDP is measured by adding all the market value of all currently produced final goods and services in a country in a given period of time, usually a year. Simply by adding all the outputs, the market value of all the outputs produced in an economy, we can measure GDP. Suppose, for example, the following hypothetical economy produces only two goods and two services. The goods produced in this hypothetical economy are TV and trouser. And the services produced in this hypothetical economy are haircuts and medical services. Now, if there are 10 televisions produced in this economy and the price of a single television is per 5,000, then the total market value of television produced in this hypothetical economy is per 50,000. And if 20 trousers are produced in this hypothetical economy, and if the price of a single trouser is per 500, then the market value of trousers produced in this hypothetical economy is 10,000 per. When we come to the service, if 300 haircut services are provided in this hypothetical economy, and if the price of a single haircut is per 50, then the total market value of haircut service produced in this hypothetical economy is 15,000 per. When we see the medical diagnosis service, if 100 medical diagnosis service 
are offered in this economy and if the price of a single medical diagnosis is 200 bir then the total market value of medical diagnosis is 20000 bir then when we add all these market values together we will get the gross domestic product at market price and this will give you 95000 bir Using the value added approach, GDP is measured by adding all the values added at each stage of production or distribution of a product and the value added is calculated by deducting the value of the intermediate input from the value of the output. And as I told you earlier, intermediate inputs are those inputs which are output by themselves but which can be used to produce another outputs. Now, using the value added approach, for example, weight is an output produced using the inputs land fertilizer and the likes but when we use for the production of flour meal this weight became intermediate input and this is the this flour meal is an output by itself produced from the input weight and when we use for the production of biscuits this flour meal became intermediate input so the value added is the value of the output, the value of the floor mill minus the value of the intermediate input, the value of weight will give you the value added. For example, if a quintal of weight is per 400, and if the a quintal of floor mill is per 600, and if a quintal of biscuit is per 700, now the value added by the floor mill factory on a quintal of weight will be 600 minus 400. So this is the value added which is 200 bir. Again, if a quintal of flour mill is 600 bir and the market value of a quintal of biscuit is 700 bir, then the value added by the biscuit factory on a quintal of flour mill will be 100 bir. So if we add GDP by adding all the values of the intermediate inputs and all the outputs together, then there is double counting. That means 400 plus 600 is 1000 and 1000 plus 700 is 1700. This is the wrong way of calculating GDP because there is double counting in measuring GDP since we add all the values of the intermediate inputs and all the values of the outputs together. So we, in the value added approach, we have to take all the values added at each stage of production or distribution of a commodity. That means the price of a quintal of weight is per 400 plus the value, uh, the value added by the floor mill factory on a quintal of weight is 200 bir plus the, the value added by the biscuit factory on a quintal of floor mill is 100 bir and then we get bir 700. So we have to take the value added by each stage of production which is 700 bir or we have to take the final value of the output, the final value of the biscuit which is 700 bir in measuring GDP. This is the example that I gave you. Now let's see the expenditure approach of measuring GDP. Under the expenditure approach of measuring GDP, GDP is measured by adding all the expenses made in an economy and there are four expenses made in an economy while we measure GDP using the expenditure approach. The, the first one is consumption expenditure. The consumption expenditure constitutes household expense made on durable consumer goods, on products that we can use for a long period of time like furniture, television, table and the likes. And the non-durable consumer goods are those goods that we cannot use for a long period of time, which are perishable such as potato, onion, tomato and the likes. And the last one is service. The service expenditure constitutes education service, health service, and the like. So by adding all the durable consumer goods and services and all the expenses made on the durable consumer goods and services, then we can calculate the consumption expenditure. This is one component of measuring GDP using the expenditure approach. The other component of measuring GDP using the expenditure approach is the gross domestic private investment. This is an investment made by the private sector and again it constitutes expenditures made on business fixed equipment, on machineries, equipment, installations, generators and the likes is considered as expenditure made on business fixed equipment and it is one of the components of the gross domestic private investment. 
The other expenditure is construction expenditure, expenditure made on the construction of residential and non-residential houses. The last one is inventory investment or changes in stock. These are unsold outputs and it is calculated by the cost of merchandise available for sale minus the cost of merchandise sold. Simply they are unsold outputs. By adding all the expense made on business fixed equipment, all the expense made on construction, and all the expense made on inventory or changes in stock, we can get the gross domestic private investment. Government expenditure is another component of measuring GDP using the expenditure approach. In this case, we will add all the expense made by local government, regional government, and federal governments. The last component of Measuring GDP using the expenditure approach is net export. The net export is the difference between export and import. If the value of export is greater than the value of import, the net export will be positive. But if the value of import is greater than the value of export, then the net export will be negative. But if the value of export is equal to the value of import, then the net export is zero. Finally, Using the expenditure approach, GDP is measured by adding all consumption expenditures made by householders, all the gross domestic private investment, government expenditure, and net export will give you the GDP at market price. Now let's see the third approach of measure GDP called the income approach. GDP is measured by adding all the income earned by resources of a country. It measures how much everyone in the economy has earned and the national income accounts divide the national income into six components depending on who earns the income. So the six components of measuring GDP using the income approach are first compensation of employees. This is the wage and salaries from the economic resource labor. The other component of Measuring GDP using the income approach is rental income. This is the reward from the economic resource land. Interest income is an income earned from the economic resource capital. The proprietor's income or profit is the reward for the economic resource entrepreneurship. And the other component that we have to add in measuring GDP using the income approach is indirect business tax. Indirect business taxes are income for the government, so we have to add on measuring GDP using the income approach. And the last one is depreciation. Depreciation is the value of capital goods that is used or wear out during the production process, and we will add in measuring GDP using the income approach. Now, let me give you a revision exercise. These components are given government expenditure, export, import, household consumption expenditure, changes in stocks, and the gross fixed capital formation. Then the net factor income from abroad is also given then you are going to calculate the gross domestic product and the gross national product. Students, this is all about Unit 7's first revision lesson. Stay safe, stay home, thank you.